Okay. Right, Task Force, thank you very much for speaking to us. Um, are you looking forward to tonight? Um, yeah, yeah, I look forward to every night. Every time I perform, I look forward to it. I suppose it's probably the heart of, of the profession I've chosen to be involved in. Have you been up to Newcastle before? Many times. Many times. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's like, it's, my parents are born here. My, my mum's from South Shields and my dad's from New, uh, from Sunderland. Right. So they, they were Mackhams. <laughs> you know, basically, um, being up here numerous times to do shows and just to visit family. So you're saying you're, uh, your family's Mackhams. I was going to ask you about the name Chester B. Hackenbush. Where does that come from? Uh, uh, a Geordie artist called Brian Talbot. Yeah. He was behind the brain. He was the brain behind a comic book, a series of comic books called Brainstorm. Roughly night, early 1980, late 1970s. Um, it is basically a comic about a psychedelic alchemist who designed a drug with every other drug known to man in one tablet. He takes it, blah, 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 blah. It's worth buying, kids, you know, go, <laughs> go and buy it. It has, been, it has been reissued since since um, I've made it popular again, apparently. But I've gone on since to have conversations with Brian Talbot, who's been very nice about the whole thing and said that I can legally use the name and blah, blah, blah. So I make a point of promoting him because he's a good fella. Excellent. And he did say I should give him a call next time I'm up here and have a munch with him, but sorry, bro. <laughs> okay, um, what you do seems to be a million miles away from the bitches and money kind of message that a lot of the hip hop seems to push at the moment. Would you say that your music's got a message? Um, sometimes, it, I mean, it means, sometimes it means something to the li different to the listener than I intended it to mean. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I think perception has a, a, a big involvement on what messages people find in music. Because I mm -hmm. can find a message in most things, but then I perceive things slightly different to the average person, possibly. Yeah. So ultimately, it's a perception thing, but there is a, there's definitely more of a message in it than, yo, go beat your bitch up and <laughs> shoot, shoot money, your homie crack. and yeah, sell some crack. You know, I mean, there's, there's more of a message in even my stupidest lyrics than that. Yeah. But um, you know, each to their own. Everyone's got a different cup of tea, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Uh, UK hip hop still seems relatively small compared to a lot of the US imports. Um, what do you think people see in the more commercial acts? More commercial British acts, or the the likes of Jay Z, the likes of Kanye West. For starters, they see a lot more of them because they've got multi multi million pound corporations backing them. Their faces everywhere. They, yeah. they, they get massive exposure, so they're much bigger. Everything about America is big. The whole place is big. It's all you know. It's a whole big mega culture beefed up on There's more and money steroids. goes into Jay-Z than her has ever, ever gone into British people. As a whole, any, everything across the every, board. Like, everyone, yeah. every, every artist. Ever, every club know. that's ever made money, yeah. every DJ yeah, that's ever made a pound has, has seen less money than Jay-Z will see. And, and that's just because we're, it's a hell of a different scene. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And some people are come out under the illusion I've heard of it in the many long years I've been doing this, people getting excited, yeah, we're gonna be like the next two pack or the next and you just think, well you're not though, you're not, honestly. Like I don't wanna be horrible or cynical, but it's just you're not. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You might go out there and we've got acts coming through now, you've got Kano's and Sways and obviously we're very proud. Very proud to say, well done, you've done well guys, you know what I mean? I, 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 only, only jealous people would hate on them for their successes. Yeah. And then we've got our, um, how can I forget her name, man? Um, Estelle, <laughs> you know, she's doing extremely well, you've got to give her love. She still knows where she come from, she's done well, she's made, she's made me proud actually, because they've taken it somewhere else. But ultimately, I think there's a lot more to see in you know, American hip hop in general. It just sounds nicer. Yeah, well, the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. It does. It's sound not like, a subculture. It sounds like money. Do you know what yeah. I mean? When yeah. you listen to that compared to something that's been mixed in a bedroom, recorded on a little SM58. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a million miles apart. It's, it is. So, so how do you see the UK scene at the moment? Is it healthy? No, no. It's, Man, it's got it's some it? collapsed lungs and, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Life and all, all kinds. Kind of drip. Yeah, it's, it's really struggling, man. It's got it's got terrible bowels as well. At the minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly full of shit. But I think you know it, it's just like it's an ebb tide, isn't it? Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. Mm -hmm. But it, to me, it's in a it's in a stage how it was when I first came into it and started getting known. And it's kind of like where it's dead, and the only people in it are the backbone people who will always be in it. Yeah. The bandwagon troops, they've all said, oh, no, something new's come along and jumped off and gone, ooh, yeah, you know what I mean? But once that's boring and this becomes the bandwagon again, they'll all come back. But the people who are here now are the people who will always be here, mm -hmm. and they're the realest people, you know what I mean? They're the people who really make this scene what it is. But we're, 
it's kind of eating itself now and becoming bitter at itself and everybody's feeling like they failed because we had a golden era sort of and like you know we all thought we were there and well, I kept trying to say don't let the media make you think you're more successful than you are because your name's in every magazine and Time Out and even Standard might talk about us. Don't start coming under the illusion of grandeur because we ain't nothing, we ain't nothing out here man, we ain't nothing, we're butter crumbs mate, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Okay, but but the, the thing is as well, the, the, the beautiful thing about the hip hop scene is that there is always a core of people, you know, I mean, like we're lucky enough to have a proper crew of fans yeah. who will support us through thick and thin and pretty much, you know, whatever we put out, there's going to be X thousand people who are going to go, well, if, hopefully you're going to go out and, buy and actually pay for your record. And that's actually like, in this day and age now, when there's so many people making music across the board, everyone can make music with a fucking computer and this and that, you know, it's very accessible. Mm. You know, to, even to have 10,000 fans across a country is like, you're, you're doing all right, yeah, you know right. what I mean? And that's like, we, we really, of all people, can't complain because we've worked. When we, we continue well, yeah. to work, we continue to go around yeah. the country and go and perform. Through, through hard and times like, and yeah, and through, good exactly, times. through times when shit's really going badly and all else there's always that which is like a backbone and we've like i mean i've survived we've both kind of survived through yeah, that, yeah. Know? all of us well, the task force unit has definitely survived yeah, uh, I mean, it is my no, only it's, income it's, as well. Yeah, so. it's, it's never been it's never been like a, a glory film where none of us have ever bought a nice car out of it or, or any or, nothing, or yeah. jewelry or any of that shit. But no, n nonetheless, we've survived off the back of it. You know? And for oh, that, well, we yeah. thank you, you yeah. die-hard hip hop fans. We yeah, love you keep, very keep much. Keep buying the you. shit, you know what I mean. Keep, keep doing it, and we'll, we'll and keep we'll, we'll keep putting it exactly. out. That's it. That's Leads it. up to my next thing actually, it's getting harder to make money from music now. Do you think piracy and um, the whole download culture has made it difficult as an artist? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, um, especially independent artists, because people just don't appreciate how much time and money you put into these projects for them to just sit there and go ooh and download it for free over a cup of tea and a spliff. And then tell you that the excuses generally are, oh I couldn't afford to buy it, Chess. It's like, listen, you can afford to buy it, man. If I can afford to put it out, you can afford to buy it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Especially if you can afford a computer to download it on, then well, yeah. something's wrong, you know. The thing is as well, is like now is music is just totally disposable, you know, people don't really there's not a lot of value attached to it. It's not like it's for back your phone. In, yeah, but exactly. A lot of people let kids these days probably won't even listen to tunes on Hi Fi, it's mm. like a thing of the past. Mm, yeah. Talking about people who listen to music on phones, MP3. which is just total low grade quality. So all of that quality control is kinda of lost. All of that quality that goes into making something great is kinda of lost. But I mean, we've been taken back into a, a, a stage where we all appear to be very amateur, and like we, it, people can't actually afford to put out CDs that look how they did two, three years ago because you ain't gonna make your money. It's gonna take you a year to clean your face. Yeah. And people, you can't afford that kind of investment. That's not a good investment in anybody's books. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So now we're gonna have to go back to putting out oh, budget CDs just to know you're gonna turn it over and make a little bit of money. Mm. Yeah. So it's worth you while doing it. So then people go, oh, how comes you've gone backwards like you're putting out? Well, it's your fault, you know? Mm -hmm. If you're gonna invest your money into our product, then it's worth us putting our money into the product to give you a better looking product. In the meanwhile, we'll have to go back to basics. And that's I mean. just survival. It's, it's a shame in a way because, like, for, for me personally, as like a record buyer, you know, I've always collected records and having a record that has a wicked artwork and has got sleeves and you can actually read mm. who played what yeah. bass and who played the congas. And I look for shit like mm. that. That's the first thing I do before I even listen to a record. On the way back from a record shop, I'll study the record it. sleeve. I look at all the shit. You know what I mean? I really like. I take interest in that. Yeah. And that all goes out the window because there's no there's no, there's room, no room for that. that. You know, when you're burning the seat like burning CDs as cheap as you can. It's all about just budget, it's true, isn't really. it? This is what you get now. You get something like that. That's it. That's what you're getting from no, now. Which on. is still yeah. cardboard you know. case. That's you. That's what you're getting. That's what you're getting. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, that's what you did to us. You know, the last one. The last one flips out into yeah, three things. Nice. You could read all and about we're it. still paying for it. Us. <laughs> <laughs> we're paying for it. Yeah. Mm, for your pleasure. But there you go. Life is such a.